What you do will affect your eternity. This world we live in right now is not our permanent dwelling place, as the Bible describes human beings as aliens, strangers, foreigners, sojourners, or pilgrims in this world. 1 Peter 2.11 Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. A sojourner is a person who resides temporarily in a place, a person who is simply passing through. The Bible compares mankind's life to grass. He or she is here today, and tomorrow you will find him or her no more. Psalms 103, 15-16 As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. To add on to that, God knows exactly how many days we will live here on earth. Job 14.5 Since his days are determined, the number of his months is with you. You have appointed his limits, so that he cannot pass. What this verse tells us is that no one has the ability to extend his days here on earth. If this is true, if our days are truly numbered, this means that we all have an allocated, limited amount of time on this earth. Have you ever sat down and thought of that before? That each second brings you closer and closer to an appointment. You may be a person who is always late for appointments, but there is one appointment that you won't be late to. In fact, you can't be late for this appointment. Hebrews 9.27 and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So what follows after this appointment? Judgment. This means that therefore our eternity is affected by what we do here on earth. We therefore have power to shape and change our eternity while we are still breathing. Are you heading to heaven? Or are you heading to hell? I remember a song I heard when I was in the shop today on the road. I googled it, and here are some of the lyrics. I'm on a highway to hell, on a highway to hell, highway to hell, I'm on a highway to hell. No stop signs, speed limit, nobody's gonna slow me down, like a wheel, gonna spin it. I believe we all know where we are heading. If you are heading to hell, I honestly believe that you know it. And if you are going to heaven, I also believe that you know. We all know deep down. What you do in this life will affect your eternity. Jesus Christ encounters two thieves who were crucified together with him. One thief questions the identity of Jesus Christ, that if really he is the Son of God, let him save himself together with them. Whilst the other thief makes a wise decision, he is remorseful. He uses his chance well in his last moments here on earth to change his destiny. He therefore repents of his sins before Jesus Christ, and immediately his destiny is altered. Jesus Christ promises to be with him that day in paradise. And somewhere in heaven right now, he is sitting there having the time of his life. This is how our daily actions are affecting our eternity, as everything we do here is a seed that we are sowing. Something he did in literally his last second on the earth has shaped his eternity. He is not in hellfire by the skin of his teeth. In his last moments, he made it to heaven. Let me tell you that everything you do matters. If you pray, it matters. If you don't pray, it matters. If you commit that sin, it matters. If you don't commit that sin, it matters. Everything you do is sowing for eternity. Galatians 6, 7 through 8. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. The devil and the world's systems are so deceptive. So much so, that it can engage someone in useless struggles of life that are not beneficial to him. People may find themselves busy gaining everything they need in this world, and eventually losing their soul. 
Honestly, what is the point of driving the fastest cars, living in the biggest homes, only for you to spend eternity in utter darkness? We should realize that the life after death is so much more important compared to life here on Earth. So after we die, we come face to face with eternity. We come face to face with the choices we made here on Earth. The choices we make here on Earth will determine our eternal destiny, either eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. After someone steps into eternity, they have no power to change his destiny. Neither do those here on Earth have power to alter that person's destiny. What awaits him is judgment. Hebrews 9.27 and as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. To illustrate this fact, Jesus Christ had to narrate to his disciples the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. That there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. And the rich man said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rise from the dead. I believe that Jesus Christ gave this parable deliberately to give us a glimpse of what happens when one steps into eternity. That whatever mistakes someone did while here on earth can never be rectified. We who are living now have a good chance to change our destiny. As much as we are living in this world, we should know that we are not of this world. We have a place and a home that we are heading to. Therefore, we should always have a heavenly perspective. We should always seek the things above since we have been raised with Jesus Christ. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Colossians 3, 1 through 3. This means that in whatever we do, we should aim to please him who enlists us as his soldiers. Never should we be found entangling ourselves in the things of this world. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. 2 Timothy 2.4 And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. 1 John 2.17 Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. 2 Corinthians 5, 9-10 At the fullness of time, which will be appointed by God, there shall be separation of the righteous from the unrighteous. 2 Peter 3, 9 explains this well when it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance.
The harvest of the world will be gathered after that God has long waited for people to repent and turn from their evil ways. The tares would be gathered and bound to be burned with fire. This will be the fate of the unrighteous, as confirmed in Revelations 14, 18-19, which says, And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the cluster of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. At the appointed time, God will give order to his angels to begin to harvest the fruits of the earth. It will be unfortunate for those who have lived their lives in unrighteousness, as they will have to face the wrath of God. And the beautiful thing about the wrath of God is that whoever receives his wrath, it is because of their own individual choice. It is your own choice where you will spend eternity. It is your own choice whether you will go to heaven or hell. No one will be in heaven by accident. Every person in heaven would have made an intentional, deliberate, calculated choice to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I assure your choices have consequences. Even in our society, if you break the law, you will face the punishment of the government. You will face the consequences of the nation or state you live in. Choices have consequences. If you choose to disobey God, and if you choose to disobey the laws He has set in His own universe, you will face the consequences, and that is the wrath of God. And the laws He has given us in His holy word reflect His holy character. This is God's universe. He spoke it into existence. This is God universe, and He is the one who holds it all together. This is God's universe, and He will one day destroy it to create a new heaven and a new earth. This is God's universe, and He will one day judge it. Therefore, it is only right that only His laws that you find in this book should prevail. And anyone that goes against the laws that He has written in this book will experience the wrath of God. The message of the wrath of God is one that a lot of people don't like, because your conscience and my conscience tells us what the scriptures tell us is true, that we have offended the Creator of the universe, who is infinite and eternal. Your conscience tells you that Romans 3.23 is right, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means that we are all liable for the wrath of God. This is why people don't like this message of the wrath of God. No one wants to hear the fact that I have offended an infinite, eternal God who demands justice. No one wants to hear the fact that the Creator of the heavens and the earth is personally angry with them for not meeting the laws of His universe that He created. Choices have consequences, and the choice you make in this lifetime will affect your eternity. You may think you are getting away with your current choices. You may currently think you can live any way you want and get away with it, but I want to read you one verse. Galatians 6, 7 Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You can mock me. You can mock your family. You can mock your pastor. But you cannot mock God. There is an eternal God that cannot be mocked that is kept account of everything. Choices have consequences.